Last year, the world came together in Paris to reach an agreement to address the climate crisis. It was a historic moment. And it was just the beginning. Join us on our journey around the globe as we learn what it will take to build a healthy, clean energy future and what more we all can do. We'll hear from the leaders, musicians, experts, and everyday people leading the fight to make climate action a reality. This is 24 Hours of Reality. We're on the road forward. And we can't do it without you, so we're glad you're with us for another hour. Hi, I'm Sam Champion. Thank you for joining us for 24 Hours of Reality, The Road Forward. Now, last year, big things happened. The world came together in Paris for COP21, where 195 nations adopted an agreement committing to reducing greenhouse gases and to limit rising global temperatures. Now, that's history right there, but it's just the beginning. Now comes the hard work of meeting those commitments. So travel with us from our home base right here at Liberty State Park, where that gorgeous green glowing globe that you just saw in the drone shot uh, in New Jersey. We're founder and chairman of the Climate Reality Project and former Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, will lead the way around the globe. Now, we're gonna visit the top 24 greenhouse emitting countries. We'll explore solutions each nation has at hand, the challenges that they face, and we'll even have a few ideas on how they can succeed in ensuring a sustainable future. We continue our look at the road forward with our 13th of 24 countries. We're glad you're here for Iran. Iran is the 11th highest greenhouse gas emitter. The nation plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 4% below business as usual levels by 2030. The country has experienced record-breaking heat in recent years, with the heat index reaching 74 degrees Celsius. That's over 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That was in July 2015. So now, please join me in welcoming a man who has led the charge in educating and inspiring action on the climate crisis, the founder and chairman of Climate Reality Project, Vice President Al Gore. Thank you again, Sam. Nice to see you, sir. Fantastic. Loving it. Loving Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much. The sun's going to be coming up here in uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, fairly soon here. We're going to go to Iran. Uh, and as usual, we'll start with the reminder of the top 24. And as Sam uh, mentioned, Iran is number 11. Um, Iran's place in the community of nations, from the perspective of the West at least, has been fraught in recent years. But when the world came together to address the climate crisis, Iran was right there and, and contributing. And we're going to go into that now. But for our audience uh, in Iran, uh, let me say, uh, first of all, I always start with these pictures of the Earth from space. This is the first image we had of our home planet from uh, the horizon of the moon, the famous Earthrise picture in 1968, and the blue marble four years later this iconic photo really launched the modern environmental movement. Uh, and of course, this image from the space station, I've said this before during previous hours, but I want to repeat it again, especially for our audience in Iran. As human beings, when we stand outside in the day and look up at the sky, it looks like a limitless expanse, but it's actually this very thin shell of atmosphere around the planet. That's crucially important because what it means is it has a very small volume of air compared to what we think. And so the fact that we're emitting 110 million tons of man-made global warming pollution dumped into that thin space every single day as if it's an open sewer means that we are accumulating an amazing volume of heat trapping pollution that's now capturing more extra heat energy every day than would be released by 400,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding on the planet every 24 hours. Big planet, but that's a huge amount of energy, <clears throat> and it's making uh, a tremendous difference. Of course, the biggest source is CO2 emissions from the burning of fossil fuels, and that's true uh, in every country, almost every country, uh, and especially the top 24. And if you look at how this 
uh, source of emissions has grown. After World War II, it really started rising, and in the late uh, 80s, it uh, rose even steeper. But we're now seeing a, a leveling off. This inspires a lot of hope. We're still adding too much every day, but this can start coming down. And in many countries, it is coming down. And thanks to the Paris Agreement, it's going to. Iran's emissions have been going up, uh, and uh, yet the commitments in Paris uh, are encouraging. Iran is uh, very interesting in its uh, mix of sources for global warming pollution. A little bit similar to Japan in the mix. Japan's at 90% from the energy sector. Iran is at 85, uh, almost 85 and a half percent. Then you have uh, agriculture and industry. Let's break down the energy sector a little bit more and look at the role of electricity and heat, manufacturing and construction, transport, and other fuel combustion. Tremendous opportunities in every one of these sectors. But of course, the reason why the world is mobilizing is we're seeing the consequences of the climate crisis. 14 of the 15 hottest years ever measured have been since 2001, and the hottest of all is this year. Already the hottest, even though we have two weeks to go, statistically certain it's going to be uh, the hottest year. Now, as Sam mentioned in his uh, introduction, uh, we, we see not only the increasing global temperatures, but in Iran, the temperatures have gotten extraordinarily high. This was this July, a picture of Iranians trying to get cool during the heat wave, but a year ago in July, we had that astounding number for the heat index, of course, the combination of temperature and humidity, and 74 degrees for Americans uh, watching this, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. That is unlivable. And in fact, the highly respected Max Planck Institute in Germany put out uh, a report recently uh, predicting that some areas of this region, this was in last May, um, uh, will become uninhabitable. Uh, and we've got to act uh, quickly because we can't depopulate these areas. I'm not going to show uh, many of the, the flood and mudslide uh, events in Iran because the far, there are many because we get the uh, precipitation concentrated in these big downpours or rain bombs as they're called now. But the bigger problem in Iran is drought. Uh, and 72% of Iran's population was affected by drought this year. This is an incredible challenge for Iran, and in some ways Iran is kind of ground zero for the climate crisis, and the, the scientists uh, can give the reasons for that. But here's one example, Lake Ermia. You remember what happened uh, to Lake Chad in, uh, in uh, northern Africa and the Aral Sea uh, in um, the former Soviet Union? Lake Ermia has had a, a, a fantastic tragedy. And this is overuse as well as drought, but the overuse comes from the fact in part that higher temperatures require more water for animals, plants, uh, and for industrial processes. Uh, and because of both dust storms that are accentuated by the drought and the burning of fossil fuels, Iran has an extremely serious air pollution problem. The dust storms are, are getting a lot worse, and air pollution is so bad that this city, Zabol, uh, is actually the world's most polluted city as measured in the standard measure of uh, uh, PM 2.5. Uh, on a national basis, Iran uh, ha has a problem. Uh, in Tehr Tehran alone, more than 5,500 deaths from air pollution each year, and on a national basis, as I started to say, uh, it, it, it ranks uh, sixth in the world after countries like China and India and, and Russia. This is an extremely uh, serious challenge. And of course, the causes are the same causes that lead to the greenhouse gas pollution. Water scarcity and climate change are also having a big impact on agriculture. That's true in every country, it's especially so uh, in Iran. Uh, this is uh, a farmer whose uh, pistachio trees are affected by salinization. We see in coastal areas in many parts of the world, rising seas not only threaten coastal populations, but they threaten the freshwater aquifers on which 
coastal agriculture begins. But the good news is that even with all of the challenges and all of the turmoil and uh, controversies, Iran has joined the global community in fighting climate change. Uh, they signed uh, the uh, agreement. Uh, now, the commitments were not uh, among the most ambitious, but they're there and they're part of the process. And as we'll see in a moment, as the cost of renewable energy continues to come down, these commitments are bound to get more ambitious because the market forces alone are going to ensure it. Uh, so let's look at the solutions that are now available. And I want to uh, start uh, not, with renewable energy and particularly when the potential in Iran for renewable energy is incredible. Let's start uh, with wind because we've already seen some increase. Now we're still in megawatts and not yet uh, gigawatts, but uh, wind has an interesting history in Iran. Actually, the historians will tell you, most of them, that the first windmill was invented uh, in ancient Persia. We associate it in the West with Holland, the Netherlands, but actually uh, there's a strong case that it was actually invented uh, in Iran. Uh, we have seen now uh, a tremendous uh, increase in the works, up to 40 gigawatts is projected. It, we're, they're not there yet, but uh, the potential is absolutely stunning. And when you look at the cost down curve for solar and then you look at the potential for solar in uh, Iran, we've already seen an increase still in megawatts, not gigawatts, same as wind. However, if you look at the insulation the, the, the solar resource in Iran. It is one of the most promising nations in the entire world. You see on the legend of this graph, uh, so many of the areas of Iran are in the absolute best category for harvesting solar energy. So this is uh, bound to come. Uh, we're seeing the, just the beginnings uh, of efforts to tap this resource. Another way to look at this uh, insulation is they get more than 300 days of sun per year in most of Iran. Uh, this is the very first grid-connected residential rooftop system in Iran, just installed a few months ago in August of this year. This is the beginning of an incredible upsurge in the use of solar uh, in Iran. Iran uh, signed the Paris Agreement, hasn't ratified it yet, but is expected to, I certainly uh, hope that Iran will. Uh, so let's look before we conclude at what Iran could do uh, to uh, make even stronger commitments. First, to make the unconditional emissions reductions more ambitious, if at all possible, because it's a small target now, but you have to begin somewhere. Diversify beyond oil and gas, uh, incentivize solar energy with one of the greatest potentials of any nation in the world and be in the country where the windmill was invented and now where solar potential is uh, among the greatest in the entire world. This, uh, ha this is the future of Iranian energy for sure. Eliminate the fossil fuel subsidies. That's a, a no-brainer even if it's politically uh, difficult. Reduce methane emissions and improve energy efficiency. I'm very excited about the role that Iran can play in joining the world community even more to make a sustainable future a reality. Back to you, Sam. Thank you, sir. Uh, how in the world can we tolerate more than 5,000 deaths in one city from air pollution? How in the world can we let that go on? Every hour we'll be sharing inspiring solutions that are already in place in each of our 24 countries. In Iran, we're exploring what happens when a nation with one of the world's largest oil and gas reserves invests in solar energy. Take a look. are embracing clean and healthy solutions to fight the climate crisis. With a global agreement now in place, the time for action is now. Iran با بیش از 80 میلیون نفر جمعیت منبعی غنی از سوخت فسیلی است. 
و رتبه دوم ذخایر گاز طبیعی و رتبه چهارم ذخایر نفتی دنیا را دارد. اما امروزه ایران ارزش منابع انرژی تجدید پذیر را دریافته است. خوشبختانه این رو نشون میده که علا رقم همه این منابع که ازش یاد کردید روی کرده توجه به منابع انرژی تجدید پذیر در ایران همیشه بوده به ویژه در سالهای اخیر با یک روی کرد جدیتری به این قضیه برداخته میشه. دولت در مناطق روستایی برای نصب صفحات خورشیدی بر روی سقف منازل یارانه پرداخت می کنند. تربر بود بعد باید چین بنزین همیشه ما ایام کردیم و خراب می شود. بلاخره نمی شود تا صبح استفاده کنیم. یکی دو ساعت استفاده می کردیم بعد از اون خاموش می کردیم. چون به خاطر کم بود بنزین و کارهای دیگه شو خراب می شود. باید می بردیم میکانیک می آوردیم. داخل تو مشکلات زیادی مشکلات داشت. این سیستم انرژی خورشیدی مستقل از شبکه برق ایران است. ایران ظرفیت تولید بیش از 75 هزار مگاوات برق را دارست که تنها یک درصد از این مقدار از منابع تجدید پذیر تأمین می شود. و با توجه به داشتن حدوداً 300 روز آفتابی در سال، ایران ظرفیت بالقوه بسیار بالاتری برای بهره برداری از خورشید را دارست. در نوامبر 2015 رهبر ایران آیت الله خامنه ای ملت ایران را به مدیریت تغییرات اقلیمی و توسعه اقتصاد سبز فراخواند. بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم چند هفته بعد در کنفرانس تغییرات اقلیمی پاریس معاون ریاست جمهوری ایران معصومه ابتکار فراخان ملی ایران در پاسخ به این تغییرات را متذکر شد. President Rouhani, despite the various challenges, has also set out a transitional course to achieve a very robust, low carbon and green economy in Iran. Considered a strong sign of solidarity with the international community for the protection of our planet Earth. As zaman bardashte shodan tahrim hay bein al melali. مقامات ایران برای ساخت بخش انرژی های تجدید پذیر کشور با چند شرکت خارجی قرارداد بستند. برنامه ایران رسوندن 5000 مگاوات در طول یک برنامه 5 ساله هستش. توسعه نیروگاه های خورشیدی فوتوولتائیک رو در ایران در دستور کار داریم و ما در حدود بیش از 1000 نقطه در ایران نیروگاه های کوچیک خورشید در نوع فوتوولتائیک رو نصب کردیم. میتونه بازه مناسبی داشته باشه چون طول ساعت آفتابی تو ایران با توجه به موقعیت جغرافیایی که قرار داره استفاده کردن از اینها میتونه بازه مناسبی داشته باشه We can make climate action a reality. Together, we're on the road forward. And now you can see Iran as a country rich in solar possibilities. Now, we've learned a little about what Iran is doing to fight the climate crisis. So now we want to hear from you. So tweet right along with us all morning long at hashtag 24 hours of reality and join in on this conversation. We'll be checking in with watch parties. If you don't have one, start one. Happening around the globe as well. As people like you are tweeting from home, the climate crisis affects actually each and every one of us. So we want to make sure that your voice is heard in this broadcast. Let's go over now to actor, activist, and our master of social media, Kalem Worthy. Hey, Kalem, I'm hearing that we have more people watching than ever, ever before. How do we know? We know because of, the, well, for many reasons, but one reason how we can show where they're watching from is because of this heat map. So I want to highlight some of these regions because we're dealing with an international broadcast right now, and we're getting tweets from all across the world at the exact same time. North America, we've been getting some amazing tweets from you guys throughout the broadcast, and we haven't even gone to the United States yet. Uh, we have some amazing tweets coming from Europe, uh, the United Kingdom, France, Denmark, Germany. Uh, 
Uh, Malaysia, we're going to see the Philippines have been sending in tweets nonstop, Thailand as well. And now we're in Iran, and we're getting some amazing tweets from Iran, but I want to talk about a few other tweets first. Uh, let's check this out. This is from India. They're holding up these water droplets, and I want to get into this campaign. I'm going to do some research on this uh, afterwards, because I really, really love what you guys are doing there. Um, I want to talk about the people here in Bangkok who are having a watch party. If you are hosting a watch party, please send in a photo, just like this. It can be a selfie, or a wifi, as we call it. There's a bunch of people in it. Uh, climate reality. Wait, uh, did you pick that up? I, I will take credit for it. Okay. I'll take credit for All it. All right, okay. Uh, we, the climate reality in India is having a watch party as well. Looks like that's having, they're having a blast there. Um, also, uh, we have uh, in, in Pakistan, the environmental uh, minister has joined them as well and apparently is uh, talking throughout the broadcast as well. So please continue to use hashtag 24 hours of reality. Remember, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Periscope, Vine, Google+, we are looking for it with the hashtag 24 hours of reality. And by using that hashtag, you're telling world leaders that you want real solutions to the greatest challenge of our time. All right, you just saw the map, the world map. If your area is not lit up, light it up, get involved, get online, and talk to Caleb. He's up all morning. You might as well be talking to him. Hey, now to discuss the impact of the climate crisis across Iran and the potential for renewable solutions uh, is the director for the Center for Environmental Policy at the Imperial College in London, Dr. Kaveh Madani, who joins us via satellite from Paris. Uh, Dr. Madani, it's so nice to meet you in person. I've been talking to you on Twitter, but it's really nice to see your face and connect with you as well. Uh, good morning. What are the major impacts of the climate crisis? We'll start there. There. What are the big impacts in Iran? Um, Iran is, is um, naturally a, a dry area, and climate change is going to make it drier and hotter. In dry areas of the world, you need um, to irrigate to grow food, so your, your capacity to grow food would be uh, more limited. Um, we have the mixture of anthropogenic and climate, uh, climatic changes which make uh, the problem uh, really complex to, to understand and, and solve. And, and right now we are seeing a lot of signs here and there uh, of, of the anthropogenic changes, like, you know, short-term impacts by the Iranians themselves, plus the, the effects from climate change, um, drying lakes, um, uh, land subsidence, groundwater uh, drawdown, um, desertification, uh, soil erosion, uh, dust storms, uh, and, and many, many other problems, ecosystem degradation, and lots of problems. So all the mixture, uh, mixture of all problems, plus we get both you know, floods and droughts in Iran, so extreme events, high, high temperatures and low temperatures. So it's, it's really a, a mixture of all problems you can name, plus we have the coastal regions which can be affected by, by sea level rise. Yeah, it's a very diverse country in the way, in its geography, I guess is the way we would put it. So is there an area that we notice more impact or less impact, or is there just generally impact all over this nation as well? Um, it is really hard, as I said, to disaggregate the, uh, the human impacts at a moment because we're, we, the, Iran is a developing country still. It, it's building its stands, a, a lot of infrastructure is being, being built. So it's, it's really hard to disaggregate. But we, we are seeing trends uh, in, in different parts of the country. Um, in, in southwest, for example, the Khuzestan province, a, a, border, a border province, um, is, is seeing a lot of frequent dust storms right now, uh, but having both uh, re, uh, regional or, or local sources plus transboundary sources. We, we didn't have this problem in the past. In Northwest, we have Lake Rumia. It's, it's, it's a lot of debate is going on where, about like whether this is a climate related event or a human, um, human event, human affected um, system. But, but we know climate change has some role there. We cannot sure. ignore this role. And, and, and the public has, you know, really see, see the effect. Mainly through the lack of water resources at the moment, so I think the Iranians in general believe in climate change and appreciate the the, the magnitude of the problem. Well, when the rest of the world thinks about Iran's economy, we think of it being a nation that is rich in fossil fuels and uses them and sends them all over the world. So, what are the long-term risks of continuing on this um, use of your rich resource of fossil fuels? This is a very double-edged problem. So, so uh, yes, um, 
when you have um, cheap uh, resources, fossil fuels, you, you will use them, first of all, at, at your, at, in your country, plus you, you export them. When the price of oil drops, you, you have um, lack of financial resources, even when you want to change and, and adapt yourself to climate change and mitigate climate change. So uh, right now, the countries in the region are facing financial uh, problems. They don't, they don't have the required financial resources to, to make changes. Uh, yeah, the other problem is what we are seeing right now in, in, in the Middle East. The countries which relied on, on uh, income from oil and gas resources are now in, in trouble. So they have bu budget uh, problems and th this is not even a problem of future. It's, it's something that we are experiencing right now. So the, we know that um, the OPEC countries, the oil rich countries cannot <laughs> go on forever and, and make money off the fossil fuels because the rest of the world is trying to make their, their um, economy independent from um, fossil fuels, and that, that's an important uh, factor for Iran. Plus, when you burn oil and gas at home, we, you see what we see in Iran. We have air quality yeah, issues uh, resulting from um, burning, burning oil at home, and, and those problems cannot be ignored. Well, we've talked a little bit about Iran being a developing nation, and you mentioned that in some of the um, less urban areas, people are already noticing these effects, but what are the conversations in the more urbanized areas and among the political leadership? What are the conversations about climate change, about reducing the impact of burning fossil fuels? Are you hearing those conversations now, or are they conversations that people still don't really want to have? Um, you know, people people talk about the environmental issues together with lots of other problems that they have. Um, um, I, I don't I don't want to say that you know people in urban areas are all uh, only concerned about climate change. They see the environmental problems in Iran. Uh, Lake Rumia is perhaps uh, the the you know what we saw about Lake Rumia is a, is a turning point in Iran's environmental history. Iran is is now aware of of the, its environmental degradation. Of course, they see climate change as one of the drivers, but they see other problems as well. They have started talking about it. Uh, we see that politicians also react to this. Um, the president made a lot of promises during his campaign about about um, about um, you know doing something about the environment. We see the budget. Uh, uh Priorities. So when they talk about it, water, wastewater, and, and environment being among the uh, top priorities, um, the the parliament has ratified the Paris deal. That's a very great news in in in, in November, and this was by only a few negative votes in in the parliament. So uh, the country is committed to to reducing it, its greenhouse gas emissions by four percent. Um, even uh, they they think they can go up to twelve percent if they get financial aid. Um, and and this is this might not sound ambitious, but it's, I think, more realistic that, that the promises that the Iran made or plans it had in the past. So politicians are, are talking about climate change, whether they can, can um, implement and, 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 and uh, materialize what they have promised, that's something to, to worry about, but, but at least they're talking about it in, in all uh, polit political loops, I believe. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I think those numbers are ambitious for a nation that is so rich in fossil fuels, where it's so easy just to rely on them. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you You, you mentioned the, the air pollution. There are some things going on in Iran right now that just make people want to talk about changes. And then Vice President Gore showed us that your country is so perfect for not only wind, but has this perfection, this abundance of solar uh, capability. So what would it take to get these things moving in your country? And are those conversations being had? Um, the country is, is moving forward. They, uh, um, we, the, you know, the, at least the plans show that uh, Iran is, is planning to add five gigawatts of, of renewables, and they have already uh, d implemented and, and, and developed a part of this. About, uh, but, but lack of financial resources, as I said, is, is a major problem in, in, in the Middle East. So um, the government is opening doors, trying to open doors for foreign investments, and this should be a good time for foreign investors interested in helping Iran's environment, plus making a good and reasonable return from 
from um, from um, renewable um, the renewable market in, in Iran. Iran is on the solar belt, but let's not forget that the dust storm can uh, dust storms ah, can limit the capacity sure. of, of solar product production. Uh, we can we can have wind in Iran. Um, uh, geothermal energy is quite promising. We have a lot of waste to turn into energy, so turning waste to energy should be uh, it, it, it is on the agenda. The government has buying. Uh, Tar, you know, feed and tariffs for buying back uh, these these energies that you produce. Uh, the new rules allow selling electricity in private market. So this is another attractive financial incentive for those interested in the problem. But let's not forget that the country is dealing with a lot of problems, like any other developing nation. So environment is 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 normally a thing that it turns out to be a limit to growth. So you you address it when when there when something goes wrong. But when it comes to renewable a lot of ambitious plans are already on the table. You make a good point that for developing nations, so much time is spent on growth that sometimes there's not a lot of conversation that is spent on the environment of those nations when you're trying to get growth going. Let's talk a little bit about, we've talked about the air pollution, let's talk a little bit about water issues in Iran. Um, you certainly have them because so much of the country is arid, but we're seeing the placement of very heavy rains and very heavy mudslides in the, in the areas that do get rain and then widespread drought in the areas that would normally get little rain, now it seems like there's none. So what's the conversation around that? And is there the awareness that this is a changing climate? Um, so, so again, we cannot fully attribute this to climate change. And, and actually, if you fully attribute this to climate change, we open doors for not taking actions because then we say that this is a global phenomena. It's not our fault. It's definitely our fault as, a, as Iranians because we got the development wrong. We, did, we got the concept wrong, like the West. We tried to copy the West, still trying to copy sure. the West in terms of producing the problems you guys have had, right. at reproducing those. So, so um, water is, is a problem that everyone in the country is aware of. Now, the amount of action and, you know, uh, what we are doing as citizens, as, as experts, uh, is, is, is questionable. I don't think we're doing enough about it. But, you know, the, the whole country is confused about the problems. We, we have long drought. We have frequent, more frequent droughts. We get crazy uh, snowfalls like, you know, two weeks ago, we yeah. uh, tear on stop <laughs> operations because of heavy uh, snowfall right after, uh, you know, ep an episode of air pollution that sure. you know shut down the city um, so the country is confused about all these things but we know we have lost snowpack which is the natural reservoir it is important for us uh, because we don't have surface water we have gone after our groundwater this is a major problem yeah. in Middle East and in, in Iran so it's a major hidden tragedy and that no one is paying attention to a lot of problems we have are similar to problems in California and you know United States West unfortunately we are behind and the, our economy is weaker so we cannot have handle with the problem. Plus, uh, add the fact that for Middle Easterns, um, food security is always a problem. So the conspiracies around that, they don't want to be um, dependent on other nations. They know there is no problem of energy security. Food security is always a problem. And they don't know how to deal with this problem. Shall they produce at home? Shall they rely on imports? And what happens if uh, political tensions increase? And this region, we know that it's unique for the amount of political tensions it always has. Yeah, I think you've explained it really, really beautifully. And I think making the comparison for Americans to going after the groundwater in a drought-stricken area like California and going after it there, and I, it, it's happening in the same way. And even though you're a developing nation, and you're right, you, you know, the West hasn't given you a lot of things to uh, that we've done right or that we're doing right now. Let's talk a little bit about those dust storms, though, because early on you mentioned that some of them um, were locally produced and some of them are traveling for great distances. Uh, is there any way possible, even if we did everything we think we should do, we couldn't really eliminate dust storms there, but, but would you notice the difference, do you think? Uh, yes, if, if we take actions, we, we will, but the problem is that we, we learn about problems after we create them. This is a new problem that, you know, I warned the whole world about. We will have drying beds uh, of, of lakes and, and, and um, wetlands that would create a lot of dust and salt, you know, uh, 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 
deposited, you know, going traveling around the world and being deposited elsewhere. People need to migrate. They will face a lot of health problems like we are seeing these on a day to day basis right now in Iran. Um, but lots of these problems are transboundary. They're traveling into your country. What can you do about it? Um, you keep negotiating with your neighbors who are suffering from a lot of uh, other problems, war and, and political instabilities that, you know, make solving this problem really hard. But this is definitely another problem that um, the whole world should be worried about. And it limits our, our, our you know, adaptation capacity, our mitigation capacity, our capacity um, to produce um, um, energy, renewable energy, and lots of lots of other problems. But sure, we if we try to keep our soil moisture high, if we try to irrigate in a right way, if we don't go crazy about development, and if we understand development right, we can mitigate this problem. This is this is we are humans. We are smart. We should be able to solve the problems that we have created our, ourselves. Dr. Madani, this has been a joy for me. It's always hard, right? You know, political um, barriers are there. Yeah, 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 of course. And I think, right you've, I think you've explained um, the problems particular to that region very, very well for those of us who don't know it well. So thank you for doing that for us uh, today. And also thank you for drawing the parallels to our own community so we can understand that that our, our struggles are very similar no matter where we are in the world. Kavi, I'll continue to follow you on Twitter and we'll be talking uh, certainly later on today on Twitter. So thank you very much, sir. And now I'm thrilled to present to you an exclusive, truly, aerial performance imagined by Cirque du Soleil and who doesn't love them? in support of our marquee partners, One Drop. It's an international nonprofit dedicated to providing access to safe water. Now, this piece, uh, it's part of the fifth edition of One Night for One Drop, and that will be on March 3rd, 2017, in Las Vegas, so next March. Please enjoy, though, right now, you don't have to leave the computer right now or leave your phone, 24 Hour of Reality's exclusive premiere here of One Drop for Mankind. drop in an ocean of God, connected by our isolation, and our cells are our incarceration, and our boundaries are imaginary lines that divide us into separate nations when we're the same creation. We use technology to keep us in communication, and yet there's nothing better than a simple conversation. They say that it's the journey, not the destination. I say the journey is the destination. We're facing global climate changes. Forests are endangered while we're chasing paper, buying things to help distract us from our human nature, luxury and compensation when our accomplishments are far beyond how much we're making. It's what we're making. The ripple effect 
I throw a rock into a lake and know the water's rising, even if it's at the smallest rate. And as the level elevates, it escalates. Get a million people throwing rocks and you can see the change. Gandhi said to be the change and he the change, so we the change. And honestly, we need to change. The time will never be the same. Even though we're different, we are all the same. He the same and she the same, so we the same. How can I complain about the minor things when there are human beings dying just to find a simple drink? Migrating miles for what's pouring out my kitchen sink it forces me to sit and think. What is the missing link? You see, it's hard to comprehend, but we are all in sync. So we have a responsibility to act. Actually, this moment, in fact, is all you'll ever really have. And right beneath the haves and the have-nots are never hads. And yet they smile brighter than the actors from these clever ads, telling us to spend a thousand bucks to get some trendy swag when we could take the same amount and end the suffering they have. There's no third world, there is only one world, one sky and one earth. One man is not an island, he's an endless universe, manifesting inner dreams. Anything is possible, as long as all of us believes anything is possible. As long as one of us believes anything is possible. At least that's what I believe. Okay, so there are people all over the world who have actually committed themselves to becoming messengers and even activists in the fight against climate crisis. Some of these people have been personally trained by Vice President Al Gore and some of the leading world scientists in order to become climate reality leaders. So in just a moment, if you're watching and you're thinking, what can I do, how can I help? Well, we'll tell you how you can join them. But first, let's meet one of these from Iran, Mohammad Ali Hassanpour. محمد علی هستم از ایران همچنین عضوی از جامعه کلایمت ریالیتی پروژکت در تهران هفته گذشته ما به خاطر آلودگی هوایی که داشتیم و شاید ناسالمی که بود مدارس رو تعطیل کردم زندگی ما شیوه زندگی ما یک شیوه ناپایدار ما از آستانه تعمل زمین پا رو فراتر گذاشتیم حضور من در دوره کلایمت ریالیتی پروژکت که در سال 2013 در حضور آقای الگور برگزار شد باعث شد که یک نگاه دیگه ای داشته باشیم نسبت مقوله محیط زیست من خودم حدودا 5 سال کارشناس محیط زیست در پالایشگاه تهران بودم حرکت میدیم شرکت ها رو حرکت میدیم مدیران اون شرکت ها رو که بتونن پروژه های زیست محیطی تعریف کنند به اونها نشون میدیم که اونها میتونن از این طریق نه تنها مسائل زیست محیطی خودشون رو کنترل بکنن بتونن سود زیست محیطی از لحاظ مالی هم داشته باشند برای داشتن یک محیط زیست سالم برای همه افراد بشر ما نیاز به تعهد همه افراد بشر داریم. Let's make it a reality. So see, it's very easy. And for those of you who are watching who feel inspired and want to help educate your own community about the climate crisis, now is a very easy chance. You can sign up right now to become a climate reality leader yourself. It's, we're gonna make it very simple. Climate change is our biggest challenge yet. The world's getting warmer, seas are rising, and our weather is getting more and more dangerous. We've got to stop. The good news is that we can. And all across the planet, climate reality leaders are leading the fight. They are inspiring people to stand up and take action when it matters. You can join them, become a climate reality leader, and learn what it means to lead a world-changing movement. You'll train with former Vice President Al Gore and some of the best scientists and influencers out there. You'll learn the latest on climate science and solutions and learn how to share it with a message that moves audiences to act. You want to make a difference? Now learn how. 
Become the world changer you know you can be. Become a climate reality leader. You can. You really can. Um, so let's check in right now with Caitlin Worthy. Caitlin, actually, you went to one of those. Uh, where, where did you go and how was it? I went to the training uh, leadership program in Iowa, and it was amazing. I was trained by some of the most amazing scientists in the world, by Vice President Al Gore as well, and it, it gave me such an incredible education on the climate crisis, and I really feel like I can make a huge difference in my community and through social media in the entire world. Speaking of social media, okay. we are getting some amazing tweets coming in with the hashtag 24 hours of reality. I want to start over here. We're getting some really exciting watch parties. These guys are having a blast. <laughs> I would love for you guys to send in a video because you guys seem like a very, very fun <laughs> group of people. Uh, we've got a great girl named Carol, and she said I should be packing my bag, but I'm watching. That is great news. However, don't miss your flight, though, but you can always stream it on your phone as well. Uh, I also want to check in with another Carol right here who said, starting my morning by learning about India's move to wind energy, watching hashtag 24 hours of reality live. Thank you so much, Carol. Remember, hashtag 24 hours live is on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Google Plus, Vine. We're looking for them right now, and I am personally looking for them right when I get off the stage. Talk to you soon. All right, so it's that actually that time when people are waking up on the East Coast. So we're telling you, don't watch network television, watch us. Right now, our friends at Connect for Climate joined together with over 70 partners to launch the Film for Climate Global Video Competition. Now, this contest invited young filmmakers from all over the world to create kind of a short video about climate action. The winner overall was called Three Seconds, created by 26-year-old American Spencer Sharp and featuring the spoken word of a very important spoken word artist that everybody follows on in social media. Fun fact, planet Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Mankind, about 140,000 years old. Let me put that in perspective. If you condense the Earth's lifespan into 24 hours, that's one full day, then we have been here on this planet for, drum roll please, three seconds. Three seconds. And look what we've done. We have modestly named ourselves Homo sapiens, meaning wise man. But is man really so wise? Smart, yes, and it's good to be smart, but not too smart for your own good. Yes, we have split the atom. Yes, we build clever machines that navigate the universe in search of new homes. But at the same time, those atoms we split created nuclear warfare. In our quest to explore the galaxy, rejects and neglects the home that we have here now. So no, that cannot be wisdom. Wisdom is different. While intelligence speaks, wisdom listens, and we willingly covered our ears to Mother Nature's screams and closed our eyes to all of her help-wanted signs. Wisdom knows that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so if we were wise, we would not be shocked when we see storms that are stronger than ever before, or more drought, hurricanes, and wildfire than ever before, because there's more pollution than ever before, more carbon, more trees cut down than ever before. At a record pace, we have increased the extinction of animals by 1,000 times the normal rate. What a feat. In the next 10 to 100 years, every beloved animal character in every children's book is predicted to go extinct. Lion gone, rhinos gone, tiger, gorilla, elephant, polar bear gone in three seconds. Species that have been here longer than us will be gone because of us in this three seconds. In an existence shorter than a Vine video, we turn the circle of life into our own personal conveyor belt. Somebody, anybody help. We were given so much. The only planet in this solar system with life. I mean, we are one in a million. No, actually, scientifically, we are one in a billion, trillion, trillion. That's a one followed by 33 zeros. And I don't want to get too spiritual, but how are we not a miracle? We are perfectly positioned to the sun so we don't burn, but not too distant so we don't turn to ice. Goldilocks said it best. We are just right. This paradise where we are given medicine from trees not coincidentally but because like the song says we are family literally everything every species is connected genetically from the sunflower to the sunfish and this is what we must recognize before it's too late because the real crisis is not global warming environmental destruction or animal agriculture it is us 
These problems are symptoms of us, byproducts of us. Our inner reflection, loss of connection has created this misdirection. We have forgotten that everything contributes to the perfection of mother nature. Corporations keep us unaware and disconnected, but they have underestimated our strength. Contrary to popular belief, millions are waking up out of their sleep, seeing our home being taken right up under our feet. We cannot allow our history to be written by the wicked, greedy, and loony. It is our duty to protect Mother Nature from those who refuse to see her beauty. Call me crazy, but I believe we should have the right to eat food that's safe with ingredients we can pronounce. Drink water that is clean, marvel at trees, breathe air free of toxins. These are natural rights, not things that can be bargained for in Congress. See, they want you to feel powerless, but it has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world but when enough people come together we too will make waves and watch the world into a new era filled with love and connection freedom for all without oppression but it is up to you yes you watching this behind this screen to make the effort because time is of the essence and only together can we make it to the fourth second What? Of course that film won. Prince EA is amazing. You can follow him on Facebook. I follow him on Facebook. Okay, over the last hour, we spent time getting to know some of the unique challenges faced by the people of Iran and their commitment to working toward a more sustainable future. And remember, the most powerful warrior in this fight against climate crisis, well, actually, it's you. So become a climate activist today by making your voice heard. It begins with you letting your leaders know, your community leaders, your national leaders, let them know where you stand on the climate crisis. And we're making it pretty easy for you to do that. So just head over to 24hoursofreality.org and choose your message to tweet to your leaders. Now, once you do that, we will send you an action toolkit, you can call it that, full of resources, solutions, and ways you can stay involved much longer than this program, much longer than these 24 hours of reality are over. All right, stand up, be a trailblazer in your community, and together we will continue to be on that road forward. The climate crisis has hit home with devastating effect disrupting people's lives and livelihoods everywhere. The Climate Reality Project was created to catalyze every level of society, demanding action to address the crisis. To date, we have trained thousands of climate reality leaders worldwide to give updates of the iconic presentation originally given by Al Gore in An Inconvenient Truth, and to educate and enlist others in the cause. These individuals hail from diverse communities and are a front line of awareness and action on the issue. Our branch offices around the world help to build powerful citizen movements. Like in Brazil, where efforts helped to ensure leadership ratified the Paris Agreement amid national turmoil. We also work to give young people and local government a voice with our 100% committed campaign. Like in Park City, Utah, a city which is pledged to go 100% renewable. Or Plymouth State University, where a student-led movement helped the university to commit to 100% renewables. The thousands involved are creating the next generation infrastructure to drive pro-climate policies at the local, state, and national levels. And finally, each year the Climate Reality Project attracts millions of viewers and the world's attention to the climate crisis with 24 Hours of Reality, a global live-streamed event featuring celebrities, dignitaries, and musicians for 24 hours. Today, we stand at the precipice of a new moment. Action is necessary and possible with affordable, widespread solutions. Join us as we make ourselves heard, as we make sure our leaders take action, and as we make a bright and sustainable future our reality.
they were ladies. We all know that the climate crisis is here. We are all affected by it. Or if this is on us, then we would do something about it. In fact, some of us already are. In our communities. In our businesses. Or in our communities. We are doing our part. Now it's your turn. As our leaders. As the ones bestowed with power. The power to represent the people. Please listen. Listen to the land. Listen to the ocean. Listen to the science. Actually, we have some demands. We demand that you protect what's left. Stop using fossil fuels. And when you do, the world will be a better place instantly. Together, we can make it a reality. Hi, I'm Karim Lady Ray. Climate change is the most important issue facing our time. We made a huge leap forward last year when our world leaders agreed to sign a global agreement, which means the hard work of change starts now. Join me and go to 24hoursofreality.org to tell your leaders to meet or exceed their climate change promises. We're really on the road forward, now let's make it a reality.